Hey, I'd like to welcome everyone here today. Um, if you don't recognize my voice, this is Luann Panesi, or as Gary calls it, Luann Panesi. I have answered to all of those. So I'm here today to give you your lecture. And what I'd like to talk to you today about is self-care. It almost sounds self-explanatory, but it's not. I don't really think people understand what self-care is. I'm going to begin with this. Healthy, enlightened, functional people who are making a difference in this world are always coming from a place of love. That sounds so general and so simplistic, but I'm going to talk about love as an intention, not as a feeling. It's not about a romantic love. It's about an intention of love. Just like health is not a noun, health is an intention. So there are three levels that we're going to be talking about over the next several weeks of this intention of love. The first level of love is self-love. And that means you take good care of you. I'm not talking about a narcissistic kind of self-love where you're fabulous and your job is to put down the rest of the world so that you feel good. That's not the kind of self-love I'm talking about. I'm talking about understanding that you are given this body for your spirit to reside in for this go around. Making sense so far? We're all on the same page? Good. So when we talk about self-love, we want to look at what are we doing to take really good care of us. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Now the second phase of love is going to be interpersonal love. Interpersonal love are nurturing quality relationships. Gary talks about right time, right place, right idea, right person, right support. You want to have the right support in your life. So while you're, you're going through this whole protocol, I want you to start thinking about what is the quality of people? What is the quality in the people in your life? And do you want to keep them around? When I first attended Gary's retreat several years ago, I walked, I went home and he, Gary said, you're going to have to get rid of all the toxic people in your life. And I said, well, I'm going to have to quit my job. <laughs> and he said, yes. And I was making six figures, little six weeks off a year, great benefits. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, that would be a real quantum leap to leave a job because I owned a home, I had car payments, I had utilities. What? But I had to think, who are these people in my life? I was a nurse administrator. I had over 100 employees, mostly women. I'll say one word and that's PMS. I'll say no more. I had to deal with egocentric physicians and administrators. I had to deal with very toxic patients and toxic families and toxic staff. And I was surrounded, but I was engrossed in a paradigm that I was indoctrinated into and I was paid very well to be a part of and to support. And after the retreat, I walked into my office and I thought to myself, I'm surrounded by toxic people. I don't belong here anymore. And within four months, I walked away from that position and I never looked back. And since then I have learned to bring in quality relationships. And when, if I have a relationship and it's no longer a quality relationship, I walk away from it. I always wish those around me or those I'm working with or those I'm involved with, I wish them love. I wish them nothing but the best. <clears throat> but if they're, lack of, of values, morality, quality of life is interfering with mine, I am never ever going to adapt down again to other people's dysfunction. 
Does that make sense? It's very important that you're getting this. So once we, we become proficient at, at self-care, now we can go on to interpersonal care. Be very careful about the relationships that you bring in and the relationships that you nurture. And finally, the third level is intrapersonal love. And that is love for the planet, love for nature, love for the bees, love for the animals, for the birds, for agriculture. It's, it's love on a, on a much higher level so that you're doing because for the good of the planet. You're, you're, you're doing because you're here to make a difference. And I got news for you. Every single person here, every single person at home, you're here to make a difference in this world because you got here. We're not here to entertain you. We're here to empower you so you can go out there and live your life's purpose, whatever that is. And we're not here to dictate your life's purpose. Only you know that. And for those of you who are, are not sure of what your life purpose is, I will tell you, and that's part of self-care, and that is silence. The more time you spend in silence every day, the more clarity you're going to have in your vision, in your thoughts, in what you're doing here. It's going to help you develop self-discipline. And most people want to live in comfort. They just want to be comfortable. They want to take the easy way out. And unfortunately, the easy way out is not the way to challenge yourself. And if you're not challenging yourself, you're not going to grow. Part of challenging yourself is failing. So we're going to talk about that a whole lot more in a different lecture. <clears throat> but for now, I want to talk about the different types of self-care. And this is critical. The first one is obviously physical care. You got to take care of this body that you were given for this go around. Oh good, I'm glad Ron's here. So number one is physical. You've got to get sleep. And it's very, 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 very important. That's why we say 10 o'clock, lights out. 9 o'clock, be in your room. So you have time. You have time to wind down for the night and get a good night's sleep. The majority of the people that I work with in my practice are sleep deprived. They're playing on the computer, they're doing things until one or two o'clock in the morning. In our last group, we had four or five people that would hang out in the staff house and giggle and laugh and party until one, two in the morning. And then the next day when they went out, they were exhausted. So by the end of the eight weeks, their blood work reflected severe adrenal exhaustion. You need your adrenals. And I'm going to spend a lot of, I'm going to be doing lectures throughout this eight weeks. I'm going to be spending a lot of time on each different organ in the body and what emotions resonate in those organs. So the Chinese figured this out 5,000 years ago, that emotions, emotional energy has the same resonance as function or dysfunction in an internal organ. To me, that's the coolest thing. I love Chinese medicine. <laughs> and I studied it for four years, and I still practice it. So we're going to learn more about that. So sleep. Secondly is stretching. If anyone has spent any time with John Q or Gary or have seen Gary's DVD, Nice and Easy, you know how important it is to do static stretches before your workouts, and then afterwards you do very good stretches so that you're opening up the muscle, you're getting circulation in there. Stretching is just so wonderful. And stretching is not exercise. I ask a lot of people in their 80s, what kind of exercise you do? I stretch every morning. And they think that's exercise. Well, stretching is important. And so is exercising. And one of the best exercises you can do is walking. And here, we do power walking. And anyone can power walk. If you have two arms and two legs and a set of hips, which most of us have, you can power walk. And power walking is using all the muscles in your body, almost, right? But, so, and I'm sure John and Gary have gone over that with you again in his DVD, Nice and Easy. You'll see how easy it is to power walk. 
So walking is far and away. Walking, swimming, and even Tai Chi and many types of yoga are working all the muscles in the body. So you want to do that. Now, also, uh, you want to have healthy food in your diet. Now, here at the villa, we're having gourmet vegan cuisine. Everybody has his book out there in the remote group, uh, Curing the Incurable, which in my opinion is just one of the best cookbooks you'll ever find on vegan cuisine. So all the recipes that we're having here from here on in are going to be right out of that book. So people at home, get right into that book and experiment. Now, you may not be able to get every single food on the list. Do your best. You'll be amazed when you combine different beans or lentils or split peas or peas with various grains, rice, amaranth, millet, teff, wonderful things you can come up with. And the seasonings, the seasonings is what makes this gourmet. And, you know, I'm, I'm coming from an Italian background. It was mostly olive oil <laughs> and then garlic and onions and oregano and things like that. Boy, oh boy, when you bring in all the different cultures and all the different flavors, and it's just wonderful. So we're going to work on that here and at home. Healthy food, healthy food. And then, of course, yoga. We encourage everyone to do some sort of yoga. And yoga you can get on DVDs at home. You know, I, I learned Tai Chi at home, and I got a, a Tai Chi DVD, and I just pop it in and I, I do my Tai Chi with the DVD. So yoga and Tai Chi are fabulous things to do because with, well, both with yoga and Tai Chi, it's all about creating balance of the body, right? And isn't life all about creating balance? That's what we're trying to do here. And what we're trying to do is balance all these facets of self-care with then the interpersonal skills and then the intrapersonal interests and in becoming an advocate for something to make it better in the world. So you wanna make sure that you're spending time to rest and relax every day. And that's why when we have a schedule, to, so you have a, a gist for how much time are we gonna spend working, cleaning up the kitchen, prepping, helping do the food prep. Everyone's gonna have their work time different hours of the day. The final cleanup at the end of the day, um, whatever, we're doing your laundry, finishing all these tasks, and always, always making time to sit quietly, to relax, to rest. If you're feeling tired in the day, stop and rest. In Chinese medicine, taking a 15 minute cat nap in the afternoon is one of the best things you can do for your adrenals. And your lifespan, by the way, is all about how strong your adrenals are. So if your adrenals are exhausted, your lifespan shrinks down. If you're eating toxic food, your lifespan shrinks down. If you're holding on to toxic emotions from the past, your lifespan shrinks down. We're here, this is anti-aging. We wanna expand your years. We don't wanna contract them. Now let's talk about that. Let's talk about emotional self-care. Stress management. I'm gonna to suggest to everybody that instead of calling it stress, we call it good information or free live entertainment. Good information is a diagnosis of cancer. Your body is screaming for your attention. Tendinitis, arthritis, GERD, you name it. Diabetes, heart disease. It's good information. It's your body saying, hey, I don't like what you're doing to me and I'm letting you know. That would be if you're from New York. So instead of emotionalizing the information, it's information and you need to respond to it. So you want to get your thinking caps on, start doing your homework and saying, now, why would this have possibly happened? And explore the core reasons for the imbalances that you have. So the rest is live entertainment. Free live entertainment means that there are people out there that you can control. Absolutely. Everybody else except you, you can't control. We like to think we can. We like to think we can save people. And we can't. We don't have that right to save people. 
If people want your help and they ask you for it, by all means, share with them. Gary Null shares his information with a lot of people. I can't tell you how many people say, oh, I've been listening to Gary now for 25 years. Yeah, so why do you have metastatic cancer? Well, you know, with this and you know, I, I do still smoke, but I went from four packs a day down to one pack a day. I mean, that's a big improvement, isn't it? It's how we rationalize and justify. So the free live entertainment is people we can't control. I don't attach myself to any outcomes. When I work with people, I work with my patients for a full year. And I'm with them hand in glove for the entire year, through thick and thin, through the bumps, through the interference, through the great times. And I just had someone who had a brain aneurysm who has a, an AV malformation in their brain. And they basically said, there's nothing we can do. And nine months later, they are functional. They're full of energy. They're working out. They're meditating. They're happy. And they said, I have never felt this great in my whole life. I'm not taking credit for that. I'm here to give you the tools. I'm here to be, a, I'm here to be a, an instrument to help you change. What you do with the tools I give you is up to you. We're counting on every single person here, every single person at home, to be committed to this 100%. Give it your all. Because this is a formal study. And we want to see if people are given the tools to manage themselves. And they can't manage events. We can't, have, we can't control what's going on right now in the world. You can't control that. We don't know if this was planned bioterror. We don't know if it came from a bat. We don't know. But the bottom line is, we can't control it. So angsting and stressing about it is personalizing people and events you have no control over to justify your angst. Oh, I'm stressed out about the climate change. I'm so stressed out about uh, a, a virus. I am, oh, I'm so stressed out because this didn't just go my way. You can't control events, you can't control people. All you can do is flow and maintain your integrity, take good care of you. When you see stress through a different set of eyes, you'd be amazed what little stress you have. It's information or it's entertainment. Sometimes it's just a, a lousy drama and you can't really change the channel. So you go, oh, that's interesting. All right, also, you are not your medical condition. It's so easy for people to lose themselves and their emotions into a medical diagnosis. It's that easy. And you don't have to do it. I discourage, I say, switch your energy to what you need to do to get well instead of dramatizing. I'm a cancer patient. No, you're not. You're a wonderful human being whose body is screaming for your attention so that you make the changes that you need to help your body heal. That's what you are. Yeah, I don't like, I, I'm an arthritis victim. Oh, don't even come at me with that. <laughs> no one's a victim, unless you choose to be a victim, in which case you can justify away and, and just justify away all your excuses and never get anything done, right? Or you can say, that's not who I am. That's good information and it's live entertainment. And by the way, that's emotional maturity. Now, forgiveness, oh Lord. Yes, 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 yes. This is one of the hardest exercises that I did. It truly was. One of the important projects that I'd like everyone to do is you make a list of all the people in your life that screwed you up, did you wrong. Look at that, we're known as on the third page already. <laughs> Fourth. Fourth. Screwed you up, did you wrong, deceived you, betrayed you, or just really pissed you off. Make a list of those people. And then what you do is you're gonna write a letter to each and every one of them. You're not going to mail it. You're not going to mail it. But you're gonna write a letter to each and every one of them. I got extra paper if you need it. And you're gonna write. This is what you did. And this is how I feel about what you did to me. You can say, I hate you for what you did. You can say all that. And at the end of the letter, you're gonna say, 
And now I understand that you did the very best with the crappy tools you were given in life. And I forgive you. It's the hardest exercise I ever did. It truly was. But it was also the most liberating exercise I ever did. And I did that at Gary's retreat. He asked us to do that. And I had a very tough time with it. But I did it. The last letter that you're going to write is a letter to yourself. And you're going to make a list of all the things you've done to deceive yourself, to wrong your body, whatever it is, whatever you've been conditioned to do, to use coping mechanisms that just because everybody else uses them, you use them, and now you're out of balance. And again, you say, and I understand now, that I was giving a very limited set of tools to deal with my life. And now I have new tools, and I forgive you. And then when you're done with those, I can shred them. I'll bring in a shredding machine. Those of you at home, if you have a shredder, shred them, put them in a bag, and throw them away. There's energy in that writing. You're going to release it. At the sweat lodge, we had a big bonfire. And everybody had a little pack of tobacco with each one of their issues and people that did them wrong. Some people had like four strands. I didn't realize, <laughs> I mean, I had just like five of them on my one necklace and I had this woman with four strands of like a hundred little things. I'm like, oh geez, we're gonna be here till midnight. <laughs> but, and when, when, we, when you release them and put them in the fire, there is something that happens in your body. One thing about Native Americans, they know about the human connectedness to higher power. They know. And you're going to know too. Even though we're not given the tools, we're going to have a knowing more than you imagine. So forgiveness, very, very, very important. Compassion, of course, of be, is being aware of what's happening in your environment. If you see an injured animal, you're going to help it, but you're going to use your head, you know? You don't want to get rabies or anything, you know? I mean, I, we had a, a, a rabid raccoon here uh, a year ago, and um, you could see the raccoon was suffering. And if, God forbid, a rabid raccoon touches you or bites you, that's it. You know, you don't want, you don't want that to happen. The most compassionate thing we could do was, was to shoot it. And that's compassion, because that animal was suffering intensely. And it was a danger to us. So that's a, that, but more compassion is understanding that there are going to be people when you go home. There's going to be people out there that you're surrounded with at home. And they're not going to be terribly supportive of what you're doing. They're free live entertainment. Yeah, they're free live entertainment. All right? You need to have compassion for everybody. And there are some people that don't deserve our attention. And that's another part. That's your self-compassion. There are some people that just want to suck the life out of you. Anybody know those? They just want to suck the life out of you and keep taking and taking and taking. And then they're not ever giving back. Be aware. You can have compassion for yourself and cut those people out of your life. When I walked away from the hospital, I got to tell you, I felt great. Even though I wasn't making my six-figure salary, I was creative enough to figure out how to generate revenue so that I could pay my bills. And you want to know what I did? I worked one day a month for 24 hours straight. I worked with people that had plastic surgery on uh, Park Avenue. And I said, I'm your 24-hour holistic nurse. I had just finished a, a course in holistic nursing, and then I was going to go back and get my degree in Chinese medicine, and I was going to go back and get my master's in natural health. So I was pretty well versed in holistic nursing, and I said, I'm, you're going to come out of plastic surgery. I'm going to be there in the recovery room. I go to them, the, the, these exclusive hotels where they're going to stay for two full days or one full day. I'm there for the first 24 hours. I'm going to be doing your icing. I'm going to be checking your vital signs. I'm going to be making sure you're out of pain. I'm going to make sure you're well nourished, well hydrated. I'm with you for 24 hours. And you know how much I charge them? What my monthly bills were. 
That's creative. Nobody else did that. No one else thought of it. I thought of it. I worked one day a month for 24 hours. <laughs> and I recovered <laughs> the other 30 days. It was great. And that's how I lived for like six, seven months while I was going and doing my masters and getting my ozone and doing everything I needed to do. So creative minds, they always figure it out. So think about that. And of course, kindness. You know, one of the most amazing things that I've seen about Gary, he's just one of the most generous people I've ever been around in my life. Now he's firm and he puts the truth in your face but I've seen him take homeless people and walk them. He, in fact, one of the health support group meetings, every single one of us had to go out. Remember, we had to go down to the Bowery and find a homeless person. I'm not talking about the ones frothing at the mouth that are infectious. I'm talking about people that fell through the cracks and are now homeless. And they had to bring them to the health support group and each one got up and told their story of how they became homeless. And we had a different perception of homelessness because some of these one guy had a brownstone and his insurance lapsed he forgot to pay the bill and the damn thing burned down he didn't get a penny for it and he became homeless so not everybody has backup cash or if it's cash it might have burned <laughs> so it's about kindness and we helped every single one of them get themselves back to get on the ground Gary in fact worked with a place upstate, one of these um, places upstate to where they would stay there and get food and shelter and they do uh, lawn work and, you know, they'd help out whatever these places were upstate. Um, I think that's beautiful. So, and then they started getting money. So they got back in the work world. Kindness is so important. And here's the great part. When you're kind, it will always come back to you tenfold. Yeah. Um, when you do something out of just sheer love and compassion and kindness, whether it be for an animal or a plant or a person or a group, and you just do it without expecting anything back, and you just flow with whatever conditions are going on, the universe, higher power, superconscious energy, call it what you want, it's going to let you know you did the right thing by having something wonderful happen to you. The same is true if you don't. You're mean-spirited, you're nasty, you're mean, you hurt someone, mark my words. It's gonna, karma's going to bite you in the ass. So karma works both ways. I would rather do everything from a place of love instead of fear and insecurity. Everything from a place of love. Now let's look at social self-care. <laughs> well, aren't we doing this? Boundaries. We've got to learn how to set boundaries with people. I'm going to be spending a whole session talking about setting boundaries with people and learning to say no. Wouldn't that be fun? You're going to practice in the mirror saying, no, that doesn't work for me. No, that doesn't work. But we've always depended on, no, that doesn't work for me. Magical words. I do full day seminars with people on communication skills, both verbal and nonverbal. It's a hoot. I have a blast with it. Once people get those tools and you utilize them, I talk about how to deal with difficult people. I've been with Gary now for 26 years. I think I'm pretty good. <laughs> I'll say no more. You know, you, you resonate with certain people and you don't resonate with certain people. Honor that. If you're not resonating with someone, don't adapt to them. Right? Learn how to set a boundary. We're going to spend a whole day on setting boundaries. Look at your support systems. Again, I ask you to look at the people in your life. Everybody has a core inner circle. It used to be my immediate family. And then as I started getting into uh, integrative medicine and stepping away from the hospital, my family wasn't sure what I was doing. They go, well, sh I know she was a nurse at one time, but I don't know what she's doing now. So my family really doesn't know what I do because in their context of a nurse, I'm not in a hospital, I'm not working in a doctor's office. They can't relate to me doing nursing care the way I'm doing nursing care. I'm more of a nurse now than I ever was in the hospital. 
because now I'm actually seeing people on part of people's journey to heal themselves. How great is that? It's wonderful. So I'm doing my thing and my immediate family is no, they're, they're in an outer circle now, right? I mean, I'm taking care of my 90 year old mother who just had a stroke and that's another whole ball of wax. Talk about rolling with the punches. My whole life changed in January when my mother had a stroke. And I went from, she was fairly independent, although a pain in the ass, and now she, she's fully dependent and a pain in the ass. But you know what? This is all part of my journey. It's part of my experience. I control what I can control. And what I can't control, I go, hmm, that's interesting. All right. And you roll with it. All right? So she's my immediate family. But my immediate inner circle is more of the people that I'm spending the most quality time with, right? My staff here is, is part of my inner circle. They know what's happening in my life. They understand. We are each other's support systems. And that's hopefully what we're gonna become here and what you're gonna develop at home is get your support systems. You don't wanna be careful with social media. Do you see what they're doing on social media? They're making this into some big giant, what we're going through now, they're, they're making it into something that it may or may not be. We're taking all the precautions that we can because we're not sure yet. We haven't done, we haven't got all the information we need. But you know what? Be careful what you meet, read on social media. Be careful what you engage in in social media. A lot of the times people are baiting you. Every three months I go through Facebook and I, I eliminate 50% of the people on Facebook that wanted to friend me. I only have very, very few people on Facebook and some people don't even have Facebook accounts anymore. I don't have Twitter, I don't blog, I don't have any of that stuff. Right now in this day and age, the way things are, I wanna stay as private as I can. I'm just saying. Um, communication, we're going to spend a whole day on that. Um, time together, uh, you want, obviously you want to spend time with quality people and always asking for help. I think learning is one of the most important things. Um, in all the years I've been doing the work that I'm doing, every single day I learn something new. Sometimes it's just a word that Gary uses and he says, do you know what that word means? <laughs> and I say, no, <laughs> I don't know. So I look it up and that's how we learn. Sometimes it's just a word I learn. And you know, I don't know if Gary told you this, but he reads a dictionary every day and he learns a new word and then he uses it as much as he can. A couple of weeks ago it was loquacious, okay? So amazing. Learn something new every single day. Listen, with all the, the reading that he does, all the research that he does, all that information he gets, from his research team, from his legal team, whoa, from his guests. It's amazing how much we can learn. Keep learning, never ever stop learning. Always stay open. Then of course there's spiritual self-care. And that is that sacred time alone. Every morning I spend a minimum of 30 minutes. It's early, early in the morning, like 5.30 in the morning. I shut off my phone. I'm in a very quiet place. I put on either environmental music or I just open my window because I'm in rural America here. And all I do is breathe. I focus on my breath in, I focus on my breath out. And I just breathe. And just focusing on the breath going in and out, that's where your energy is. And suddenly there is a calm that consumes my entire body. There's a relaxation. Just listening. I love environmental sounds. I, I grew up on a boat on, on the Great South Bay. So I'm used to the ocean. I'm used to the bay. I'm used to sounds of water and seagulls and terns and, and egrets and things like that. So when I have a, a CD that's playing that kind of music, it, I immediately go back to those days. Life was so simple then. You know, I was being taken care of. <laughs> and then other times I, I'm listening to sounds of the forest or sounds of the uh, rainforest or whatever it is. But though, that sounds of nature and 
here in the villa, you've got that right here, right here. Find a quiet place to sit and listen and breathe all the aromas that are going on. You at home, this is springtime, no matter where you are, you've got some kind of country setting or get a CD. I have a lot of people that listen to CDs and listening to calming music. Spend time alone. Meditation, yoga again. Connecting with nature. Here it is. Everything is here, not for Gary. This is here for you. Every guinea hen running around. Every hawk you see in the sky. We had an eagle nest here last October. And right as Gary walked by one day, an eagle feather dropped right in front of him. Nothing happens by chance. Nothing. So if you're paying attention to what's going on around you, you're going to get a lot of information. So connect with it. Of course, one of the most important parts of your spiritual development is journaling. Every single one of us needs to be journaling. And you'll all be handing your journals in. Now, you, some people can have two journals. One could be a personal journal where you're working out your own feelings. And another one could be a journal just journaling what I've learned today. And maybe what you've learned is a feeling you've been holding on to that you're ready to release and let go of, which is why I have Jason coming every week to help you do that emotional freedom technique, to help you release old emotions. It's so healthy. It's so healthy. Wait till we do that lecture on the organs and the emotions. You, suddenly it's all going to click why different organs are working differently for you or against you and what you can do to maximize their function. It's fascinating stuff. Um, I also encourage people to hold sacred space. Sacred space means this is your place, this is your spot, and some people make altars, that's fine. Some people have a certain place in their home. I have a certain place in my home. It's my space and no one's allowed there. That's just the way it is. And in my space, I can do anything I want. So sometimes it's where I'm in my office by my computer and other times it's in my room. It's wonderful. Find a sacred space that's just yours. Now let's look at personal self-care. Things like hobbies. Gary's hobby is comparative religion and landscape architecture. Find something that you become passionate about. When I was growing up, I was fascinated with birds. I don't know why. I was fascinated with birds, how they could fly, their song, how they attract other birds. I was fascinated with them and I would get books out on how to, how to recognize birds at a distance just by their silhouettes and on a telephone wire and I was fascinated. I had a little diary and I would write down each day which different birds I saw and if I saw a new bird, you remember, I was at the, in the Great South Bay and we had a house on Long Island in Hicksville. So we had backyard birds and we had ocean birds, oh my god, all these birds. I was fascinated. My mother found out about it. She found out the book that I had on how to recognize birds at a distance. She smacked me in the face and she says, old people watch birds, not young women. Bring those books back. So I went to the library and I got books out on witchcraft just to mess with her. I did, I really did. She really beat me then. <laughs> yeah. So I snuck the bird books back in. <laughs> but to this day, I have three parrots. I have 12 chickens. I love birds. And this is my passion. And part of my, my passion is to, to nurture and protect birds. And then I, <laughs> I joined this thing called Ducks Unlimited. I'm thinking, oh, great. I'm going to learn all about ducks because I signed up for Chicken Magazine because I have chickens now. <laughs> And I didn't realize Ducks Unlimited was about shooting ducks. <laughs> and it's all about guns and camouflage and bird dogs. And I'm like, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> but I got a nice decal for my car anyway. See, there's always good that comes from these conflicts. So, um, yeah, 
find a hobby. Find something that you just really, really enjoy doing. Uh, one of the, the new things that I'm going to be learning about is uh, photonics, uh, which um, I'm hopefully going to be, that's the use of light energy to heal the body. Light and laser therapy. Uh, it's a new technology. I'm fascinated with it. This is the coolest thing. And wait till we talk about the Kyer cap. We're going to talk about how to, how, how to heal your skin, how to grow your hair. Because as we age, our body is a little less efficient. And sometimes we have to use technology to, you know, kick it up a little bit. The next thing is knowing yourself. You know, have you all seen Gary's uh, DVD yet um, on the life energies? We didn't do that one yet. We should. We should see that one. I'll make sure that we see it because when I understood the life energies, I used to do a whole presentation on personality types. And Gary took it to a whole new dimension with the life energies. Because within the life energies, you can still have personality types. And I'm like, whoa. Um, and so when I learned about the life energies, I realized I was conditioned to be one person, right? You were all conditioned to be something so that you got the approval from your tribe, be it your parents or your teachers or your mentors or your kin, whoever. You were conditioned to be someone, but maybe your authentic self is not that. Being in silence, journaling, releasing, doing all of this stuff is going to help you to connect with who the heck you really are. And that become, then you become unstoppable because you're no longer doing things to make people happy. You're doing things because it's the right thing to do. I want to make sure you're all resonating with this. Anybody have any issues with this, you let me know. Okay. This all goes along with personal identity, honoring the true self versus the conditioned self. Um, I used to be very defensive. I used to be very angry and rageful. And it all came from my conditioning, you know, coming from a rageful environment at home. You know, I'd be, the good news was I'm, I'm a very affectionate physical person. So you honor, take the tools from your past that work for you and get rid of the stuff that no, is no longer valid in your life today because it's not helping you be the best that you could possibly be. Now let's talk about space self-care. And that means putting yourself in a safe environment. One of the things I sent out to the retreaters that are going to be here in a couple of weeks is that you are coming to the safest place on the planet when you come down here for retreat. And you have a choice, just like I told Deborah. You can stay home, shrink back, be contracted, and shiver in fear until this is all over. Or you can step up, take the risk, get on the plane, get down here, and be in the happiest, safest, most beautiful place in the country right now. She stepped up. I wasn't attached to the outcome. Whether she stayed home or showed up, all I could do was give her the invitation. What she did with it was up to her. Some people shrunk back and stayed at home. I don't talk anyone into coming to these. People talk me into being a part of this. And she stepped up. It was the last minute, but she showed up. <laughs> so you want to be in a safe space. Gary has been talking on his shows forever. Well, for the past 15 years at least, about coming changes and how we all had to be prepared. So you have to think, how many of us have us have water reserve? How many of us have food reserve? I had a woman call because 10 years ago, Gary made an offer to us from his health food store. You come, I'm going to give you giant bags of, you can buy grains, seed, uh, beans, seeds, you know, oatmeal, amaranth, whatever. He's going to, big bulk bags of dried grains and dried beans for crisis. And this woman, um, Deb, she actually bought a whole bunch of stuff and she had it in a climate controlled setting in her home. She called me the other day. She says, I just had to call and tell you, please thank Gary for selling us these gigantic things of beans and rice and grains because I'm cooking all this stuff up now because I can't get food anywhere. 
and I am just as happy as a clam. Please tell Gary thank you again for letting us buy this stuff in bulk. Smart people are going to be ready for this. We didn't know how, we didn't know when, we just knew it was going to happen. And now we're, we're in it, and the people who are prepared are going to do fine. And the people that are just going to shrink back in fear will stay shrunk back in fear. All right, a healthy living environment. I don't know if I have to go over that much more, but I'm going to actually spend a whole lecture on environmental hygiene. We're going to go over carpeting and toothpaste. I'm going to go over all that stuff because that's, that's a fun lecture. And then, of course, some of the most difficult things for people is keeping your space organized. Keeping your living space organized. For those of us that are stuck at home, this is a wonderful opportunity to do spring cleaning and go through all your stuff. The more stuff we have, the more responsible we have to be for it. And you gotta just let go of stuff. Just pack it, just let it go. Donate it, if it's not donatable, either recycle it, get rid of it. Just get rid of it. Keep your space organized. I tell people, when you have clutter in your physical environment, you've got clutter in your head and you've got clutter in your body. When I work with people that have brain tumors, I know this is going to sound crazy, but I say, you got an attic? Oh yeah. I said, is it full of stuff? Oh yeah. I said, time to go through your attic and get rid of stuff. People with colon cancer, I said, you got a basement? Oh yeah, I got a basement. I said, is it full of mold? Yeah. Is it full of garbage? Yeah. Stuff you'll never use? Yeah. Get rid of it. Clutter here, clutter here, clutter here. It's not mind, body, spirit. It's mind, body, environment. The spirit is what makes it happen or not. So we're going to be spending a lot of time with that. And finally, we're working with financial safety. So few people, and again, Gary's been talking to his audience about this for decades. You've got to be able to manage your money enough so that you're able to withstand crises like we're having. I have a very different attitude about money than most people do. I don't know why, it's just, it's just how I function. I have a certain standard of living that I'm living with. I live fairly simply. I like my creature comforts, and that's the way it is. Someone sent me something that, you know you're getting old when you have a favorite spatula. <laughs> <laughs> Elaine gave me a spatula with a peacock on it, and it is far away my favorite spatula that I've ever had. Did you know that? <laughs> and I use that spatula all the time. So you want to live simply, live organized, and live within your means. Um, I happen to be very good at budgets. And I want everyone to start practicing budgeting. You got to look at where is my money coming in? If it's social security or pension, or if you're actually working, or you're getting those and you're doing some side work, great. Figure out how much is coming in, figure out how much is going out in bills. And then you can start working on how can I generate revenue? And I think we're leaning into a, an, an era of barter all over again with what's happening. And we happen to have some extremely talented people at home and here. I know we have talented people. And you'll be amazed at what we can barter. I work with a woman who lives in Washington State. And she grows, uh, she has chickens. And she also has all kinds of, uh, she has a big greenhouse. And she grows every type of tomato you can imagine. And she has neighbors that grow all the different medicinal mushrooms. So she gives them eggs and tomatoes and she gets all these medicinal mushrooms. This is how the community works. They're all in the mountains of Washington State. And they're all around Native Americans who are all around the mountains. And this is how they live. They're pretty much off the grid. They all have solar panels. And it's all working for them. So that's them. You've got to work in your community, in your area, with what you're doing. And we're even going to go so far as to say, should you be living where you're living? Do you really want to stay where you're living? Part of self-care is, where the heck are you living? I mean, I, we had a woman here last time, and she, even though she really got a lot of the concepts, she, it was more important for her to stay home in a house 
that she was familiar with, with old pictures and stuff on the wall, she would rather stay there in a toxic state than go to a place that's sustainable. Everyone's different, and we bless her on her journey, and we send her love. But it's not going to end well where she's living. So anyway, now how many of you are working full time? Yeah. Artists never, you know, right? If you're working, it's very, very, very important to integrate break time. What? Break time. Except for me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you need to make sure you take, take a lunch break. Because some people become martyrs at their job and that depletes the adrenals and the adrenals are your lifespan. You don't want to do that. So no matter what, make sure you're not working more than a 40 hour week because as you get older, your body is less resilient. So as we get older, we got to make sure we're taking a lunch break and breaks in the morning and the afternoon or afternoon and whatever your, your shift is. Okay, so um, this is going to be coming right at you all at home. I'm going to be sending this right over and we'll get it all emailed out to you. All the different types of self-care, physical, emotional, social, spiritual, personal, space self-care, financial, and work self-care. So uh, if you have questions, I invite you at home to email me at whnn at aol.com. That's William Harry Nancy Nancy, whnn at aol.com. My first business was called Holistic Nursing Networks. That's what that stands for. All right. Well, thank you all for joining us. Thank you at home. And uh, I'm looking forward to our next presentation together. Make it a great day.